It all leads back to World of Warcraft. Here we go. Well, I guess they were right. It all leads back here. What? If I'm being honest, it technically all leads back here where 11 year old me got catfished by some dude named Momo playing a female character. But man, has it really been a journey. I can actually remember back to the first time I played an MMORPG. To be honest, it wasn't because the game looked interesting or anything. I mean, look at this game. I just... Nah, bro, like if I was 11, that game would be so fun. Like I would have been going so hard on that game really yeah. wanted to fit in. You see, I didn't have any friends after moving into my aunt's house such a young age. Mm -hmm. We didn't have much. I this hung out with is. my cousins here and there, I guess, Aww. but all of my friends were back home. What's crazy is I can still remember how lonely I felt back then, but I got lucky. I overheard the kids at my new school talking about a game called Maple Story. So I oh, went God. home, booted up the dial-up internet using Story. AOL and downloaded the game. Went back to school, lied to everyone, and acted like I've been playing the game for months. That's, just, yeah, I mean, this is probably what a little kid would do. Absolutely. Everyone was really a new back then, so I just made some shit up, and through Maple Story, we actually became really good friends. Now, I know that sounds fucked up, but little kids are demons anyway, so you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. I was just an 11-year-old <laughs> kid trying to make it. Some now, random was guy great going all, crazy. But it started to get a little expensive, and my mom wasn't really happy with all of the random credit card purchases. But hey, I swear that- I see how he got into Lost Ark. So you could say that this game is like a gateway drug, basically. They weren't for me, they were for Momo. Yeah, that guy. By the way, Momo, if the off chance- Wait, so... He was getting catfished by Stoops, and Stoops was spending his mom's credit card to buy her gifts, him gifts, at 11 years old. Oh, man. So that you ever see this video, fuck you, but also in some creepy turn of events, I actually owe a lot to you. But I guess more on that later. Two years later, my friends back home actually started playing a new MMO called World of Warcraft. Imagine that. Fast forward a few months later, Everyone did. I mean, literally everyone. It felt like the whole world was playing. Okay. And here I was playing this 2D pay to win MMO where everyone stood in town flexing their cat drip. So I jumped ship, begged my mom for $15. And when I say beg, I mean literally beg. I locked myself in my room like an immature asshat until she slid the credit card under the door, knowing we had absolutely no money. Oh my God. Oh my fucking god, man. That's a base. I mean, listen, it worked. I mean, if you're a kid, you do you like how else are you going to get any money? All she wanted to do was make her son Don't hate the happy. player, hate the game. Or shut me up. I guess we'll never know, but little did we both Probably know a bit that of her sliding that card under the door would change my life forever. It sure did. You know, all we did at school was talk about WoW. Yep. When we got back Same. home, we played more WoW. We yep. didn't use Discord back then. We had Ventrilo, TeamSpeak, yep. but it was a different time, I'm telling you. I've got balls of steel. <laughs> I guess some of us used AIM. My I, I remember watching that on YTMND. ID was Shmooinator93 because I liked Shamu in the movie The Terminator, but oh, all the what, cool what? kids simply used WoW to chat. My way okay. of kicking it with my friends is running straight back home to see if Ricky or Brandon were online. Those were the days. See, like, I was I was a couple years before this, and so I would come home, and we would all get on Xbox Live. And, like, everybody would school in school, like, we all had, like, our own clan and, and everything, and we were all, all part of this clan. And we would play, like, Halo 2 all the time. You know, if you asked my mom just over a year ago, she would have told you I wasted nearly 15 years of my life playing That's video right. games. Yep. And I guess I kind of did. Yeah. That is till I made my first YouTube channel. You see, the reason I actually started a YouTube channel was to give myself something to do. When WoW started to suck ass, which was pretty much every expansion after Wrath, League of Legends started popping off and all of my friends at school were no longer interested in playing WoW. So this is exactly what I said happened is that WoW lost a lot of people to League of Legends. Because, like, a lot of people just wanted to play a third-person PvP game, and WoW was the best version of it. But then whenever League came out, League was like WoW, but it had less barriers to entry, so more people would play it. And it was also probably easier to run than WoW was. 
they started playing League. Tons yep. of damage. But I wow. sucked at MOBAs, Han, and League, so there I was, an MMO reject loser trying to convince those same friends to play Guild Wars 2 because it was going to be the next big MMO RPG. Oh, man. Well, you know, you can't be right about everything, right? Nobody's perfect. And we all know how that turned out. Yeah. And because of this, my friend group started to part way. Oh, my God. Fucking, like... That is, uh, that is him, 100%. Yep. Days. Losing touch with my friends Little kind of stoops, set me yeah. down a weird path. I started hanging out with the wrong people, uh -oh. got into some pretty bad habits that I'm a bit ashamed of, and instead of using games to fit in, I tried using something else. And that something else kind of fucked up my life for a bit. I used to watch a guy named Mike B, aka Phony. He, he made game reviews, but primarily on MMORPGs. Okay. I remember thinking he was so cool. And you know, as I'm writing this, I wonder if kids look at Josh Strife Hayes and think the same thing. What am I saying? They probably don't. They probably watch Kai Kana and spam W's in chat, but I- Hey, that's fine to me. Yeah, I, I think that's fucking badass. Yeah, I, I'd be doing the same shit. I always wanted to be like Mike, no pun intended. So anyways, I started making YouTube videos after getting back into WoW. It was time to clean up my ass. For me, the person who inspired me to make YouTube videos, there was three people. Wreckful, Kriparian, and Athene. That was it. Whenever I, I watched their videos, I was like, these are the fucking best. Swifty, well, like, Swifty was doing more IRL videos. And I really, I, like, I, I remember, bro, like especially Kriparian because I remember like all of the old school Kriparian 2011 2012 videos it's just a guy sitting in front of his webcam wearing the same shirt every single day explaining the reason why he doesn't have long hair is because it can mean that he can take more days and not shower and it doesn't look bad and I was like wow I can do this I'm already doing half of this well, maybe people will watch me too. And Athene, yeah. Well, the thing is, like, it was like me, Cody, and Jeff, and like we would watch Athene videos, and it was like, oh my god, like this guy's like us, but better at the game, a little bit older, and he also has a girlfriend. Like, so like basically, this guy is fucking a legend, right? And so yeah, I saw Athene videos and all these, and I absolutely started making videos because of that. The Hobbs way of pulling. Oh yeah, no, there were other people like Swifty, Hobbs, uh, just other content creators. Just can't think of right off the top of my head right now that also were like inspirations. But like those were the main three for me. And your dentist. Well, that was for streaming. I'm talking about for making videos. And also get an A on one of my course projects. We had to wow. start our own business, and I used my YouTube channel as an easy pass. That's actually smart. And it did well. Yeah. Except when I first started, I told Rich Campbell I would mushroom stamp his forehead and got rightfully shit on. But those were the early days of Twitch and almost... That shit was so fucking funny. Yeah, I forgot even what it was. But like, Stoops was talking about like he was going to like mushroom stamp Rich's forehead. And then we were all laughing about it because it was just kind of funny. And then like a year later, Stoops was on all craft and everything was fine. Everyone has forgot, so I am chilling. Except Rich, that dude won't let me live that shit down and yeah, brings true. it up almost every time I see him. But other than that, things were going well. I was actually making a bunch of friends through my little online community, albeit a little parasocial. And that's the youngest RuneScape player right there. It started to feel like it did when I was younger. And then I met Savix. Aww. Well, I didn't really meet Savix per se. I was just some parasocial Andy in his chat. I used to gift him subs in order to get his attention, Jesus. and- Oh, oh, don't ever let them say that only girls have simps. Guys have simps too, okay? It kind of worked. You see, he was a smaller streamer at the time, and I'd actually yep. messaged Savix on Facebook. He had like this WoW page, and I asked him if he wanted to create content together. Wow. That is so cute. Oh my god, that is so cute. Wow. He don't walled me for six months, left me yeah. on red, and yeah. I did what all good chatters would do then. If he was going to ignore my messages and don't wall me, type in caps lock. I'll force him to acknowledge me by giving him my money. Oh, yeah, and yeah. It worked. 
I gave Savix the last $200 I had in gifted subs. Bro, are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. Guys, please. Please, please don't do it. No, 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 no. What are you doing? Oh, you cannot donate money like this. Guys, listen. Don't encourage this. I should start encouraging it. This is, it seems like a great idea. Yeah, if I ever bring donations back, I will. And we did some arena together. Okay. And it went all right. Fast forward a few months later, yeah, Savix enough. and I became best friends. We jumped out of a plane together. We did all of our taxes wow. together and would do random IRL streams that I will look back on as some of the best times of my life. I had also made some other amazing friends through the WoW community. Like That's actually really nice. Like, uh, th this, this whole thing is actually, like, it's goofy, but it's very wholesome at the same time. And Bonnie, Clack, Peo, Guzu, and many more to mention. And when I look back at my time playing WoW and creating content, it was never the expansion that was necessarily fun. Mm -hmm. It was the time I spent playing with my friends. Yeah. That's why I liked Cataclysm so much, is because I spent a lot of time with my friends. Legion was way better than Shadowlands, but when I yeah, think true. about the horrendous nights forcing myself to do Torghast so Savix could finish those legendary proc gloves, yes, it sucked massive cock, but it's a memory I won't forget. I spent a lot of my time critic. I think that like I have maybe two or three memorable moments from Shadowlands. Other than that, I don't really have a lot. I didn't like Shadowlands very much. In content for World of Warcraft, examining the issues of the game and trying to provide feedback. I had also pushed for solo queue rated PvP for like five years yep. just to realize practically no one gives a shit about PvP and MMORPGs anymore. True. By the way, I have to include this in the video. I find it hilarious that Blizzard has finally added rated solo queue PvP after all of my friends damn near quit, but I digress. This type of content went on for a while, and although I really enjoyed my time creating various feedback-focused videos that Asmongold would watch on his channel, oh, wow. it just felt like I was providing feedback on the same things over and over again, causing me to just burn out. I think that's what happened with a lot of people like making content and stuff is that they got really burned out from like playing the game, focusing on the game, making content about the game all the time. And then it's just like it doesn't really go anywhere. You're not really getting anything out of it. People are constantly hating on you for it. Yeah, it just sucks. So it's not a surprise that he would feel this way. I think a lot of people did. TBC Classic then launched and I got sick of waking up at 9 in the morning raiding with other boomers that struggled to manage their one button frostbolt rotation. I started- Yeah, I, I quit. As soon as we started wiping in Classic, I immediately quit the game. I'm like, I don't want to do this. This isn't hard. If you're making mistakes, I don't want to play with you. Browsing yep, the internet for other MMORPGs to be released I'm that not year, even sorry. and a game by the name of Lost Ark popped up. Oh. I had played several years back and in fact had bought a stolen account from some sketchy Korean website, but that didn't last long as that account was closed soon after. When finding out Amazon was going to be publishing the game in the West, I decided to subscribe to a YouTuber by the name we of Saivo yep. and followed his instructions on how to access the already released Russian client. I hit up my yep. boy Savix and Yasuo to show them what I had found, and we had a blast. Oh my god. After that night, I decided that I would take a break from WoW and start streaming other MMOs, starting with Lost Ark. You know, I had every intention of trying out other MMOs like I said I would, yeah. like Guild Wars 2 and Albion, but during my first stream playing Lost Ark, I met another creator by the name of Saint Tone. He saw me struggling to understand how to properly cut a stone okay. and offered his help. This trend continued as many people from the community would stop by my stream and honestly almost everyone welcomed me with open arms. Yeah, I feel like the Lost Ark community was in general pretty positive. Like everybody was nice. Yeah, saying like I think we've had Sand on all crap before. He's he's a nice guy. Like a lot of pretty much everybody in the Lost Ark community has been like super positive and nice. Whenever I would try a new piece of content, my chat would go full Korean. In fact, at yeah, some point, I had same. more Korean viewers than English viewers. What the fuck? I had a KR-focused YouTube channel that was translating my journey, and with the launch of Lost Ark around the corner, I was popping off. I met even more friends throughout this journey, like Canon, ATK, and Benji, 
Also, yeah. shout out to Bard Bard. And I even. Those are all Lost Art content creators. I know you guys might not know them because this is about WoW stuff, but yeah. Traveled to Korea to meet They're them nice and had guys. one of the best times of my life. The Fast deals. forward a little bit, me and Saint are now going to be moving in together. All of this because. God damn, bro. Like, this guy, like. Bro, like. He's moving in with him? Oh my god. I decided to try a new game without being so focused on all of the minute details and problems with the game. Yeah. Despite being a pay-to-win grind fest, some of my, yes. my best memories I've ever had playing an MMO have come from Lost Ark. But it wasn't from the game itself, and although it has some of the best combat out of any game out there, it was because of the community. You see, it was at this moment that I discovered something about myself as a human being and as a player. I wasn't looking for a game to fill that void I had as a child. Yeah. I was looking for friends and a community. Lost Ark has given me that and so much more. And for that, I am forever grateful. Yeah, I feel like that's the same for a lot of people is that like the community and the people that you play with are in a lot of ways more important than the game. I think personally, a good example of this is PUBG. PUBG, let's be honest, is a terrible game. Uh, it, it, it's always been terrible. I think that it's much better than it is now or than it was, but it is still fucking terrible. And that's just the way it is. But I, I have to say that I had a lot of time, a lot of fun times playing it because I was playing with McConnell, I was playing with like S Fan, Train. Like, fucking Zach, Josh, like, everybody that we played with was fucking great. And that's what I really, that's what I really miss and I really remember. Creating a con on launch with the boys from Korea will go down as something I will remember forever. And although the fight is truly an epic encounter, yeah, it wouldn't have been the same without them. The same goes for World of Warcraft. It wasn't about the yep. game. It was about meeting friends like Savix and Bonnie and spending countless nights laughing in Discord while creating random YouTube thumbnails using WoW Model Viewer. This, ladies and gentlemen, are what MMORPGs are all about. It's about the friends yep. you make along the way, the community you surround yourself with i don't care about the game and its systems anymore i want to create memorable experiences oh. with the people around me i turn 30 next year and even saying that freaks me out whoa, whoa, whoa. i'm not getting any younger oh he turns I 30 oh bro like i remember whenever i turned 30 oh my god like i was so nervous and worried about turning 30 because i was like oh this is it this is where your life is over and then the day that it was my 30th birthday, I didn't even care. I was like, yep, all right, cool. Well, we're just going to go back and keep doing what we always did. And now I don't really have any, uh, I, I'm not afraid of it anymore. What about whenever I turn 40? I'm not anywhere even remotely close to that, okay? That, that's, I'm, no, that did not happen. I've accomplished more than I ever thought I would through streaming and creating content. And coming from being raised by a single mom living off food stamps, I never thought this would actually be my life. Aww. Now with Dragonflight's release, I've actually convinced a few of my Korean Lost Ark buddies to give it a shot. They introduced me to their world, and now it's time for me to introduce them to mine. That's nice. Do I think Dragonflight's going to be any good? I mean, if I'm being honest, <laughs> it'll definitely be fun for a little bit. Exactly. The, the thing is, everybody that plays these games, these like MMOs, they're always so focused on like, oh, I want this game to be good for like the next seven years. It's like, bro, like, I, I don't know if it's going to be good for that long. Like, I just play it if it's fun at the current time. But then after a few weeks, it'll... I mean, yeah, but hey, I, mean, yeah. I think that is normal for most MMOs nowadays. It is. You're always going to have... Same thing happened with Lost Ark. ...have this huge influx of returning players checking out the new content, and then after several patches, you end up with the core audience remaining. That doesn't yeah. mean the game is dying, per se. That is just the average life cycle of most MMORPGs. Absolutely. So I'll just enjoy the game at my own pace, and a couple of weeks of fun is worth the $60 or whatever it is. At the end of the day, there is no this better is thing than running a couple of dungeons with the boys and looting that first epic weapon. I will say, after taking an extended break from the game, everything kind of looks like Play-Doh now, and the new UI feels so weird. And after playing other games, yeah, the combat feels a bit dated. I do, I do kind of, I like, I, I think that's cool. Maybe I'm crazy. I think that's cool to see that happen. Like chain lightning and shit like that's badass. 
but I'll still I be playing Black Lost Ark. So for me, it's about having a good time with my buddies, having yep. a few laughs, and of course, checking out the new solo queue system. I also have to include that I think the new dragon riding system may be the best addition to WoW's leveling that they've had in years. I, I will agree with that. I think dragon riding is the best addition to leveling that Blizzard has made ever since Warlords of Draenor with the treasures that you could loot. It is a universal W. I can't even imagine going back to the old leveling because I genuinely had a blast gathering all of the glyphs and exploring all of the new zones. It was nice. And the ability to focus on gathering gear instead of all of these random progression systems yeah. has been so refreshing. But when it comes to game launches, I'm a bit more excited to mess Elden around Ring. on games like Throne and Liberty, Diablo 4, and even Ashes of Creation. They seem okay. a little bit more interesting based on the information out there. Okay. And hey, maybe by the time I'm 50, I'll have the chance to play the Riot MMO and relive some of those bat chest feelings I had watching Arcane. And although it's hard to believe that these games will actually deliver, I don't really care anymore because you never know how a game will turn out. Or yeah, who and I think that's really what matters is like my perspective on playing games now is that if I'm having fun playing them, I just keep playing them. And if they're not fun anymore, then I just stop playing them. I stop trying to make the game some sort of like, uh, you know, some sort of life commitment. I, I don't want to make a game a life commitment. I just want to play the game and have it be fun. That's it. You'll end up meeting. And that is what this video is all about. That is why I won't miss another MMO launch. I really wanted to share with you all my journey, yeah, the it's people really I've met along the way, and more importantly, the impact MMORPGs have had on my life. And I, I really think it's fucking funny that Lost Ark has credit cards. Holy fuck, that is, that is so fucking funny to me. I know making friends in MMOs isn't what it used to be, but I really hope you can all find that group of friends that make it all worth it. Who knows, you may end up meeting your very own Savix, Saint, or in some unfortunate cases, your very own Momo. Yeah, it's about Thank right. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel over the years, Aww. and I can't wait to continue this journey of creating content surrounding MMORPGs. I won't be able to do this forever, so I want to make sure I go out my own way. Shout out to Mike B, aka Phony, and I'll see you all in the next one. Why wouldn't you be able to do it forever? You just do it until you want to stop doing it. Like, that's about it. I never really think that I'm going to stop. Like, I, I think that in one way or another, I'm always going to make content in, in some form. It's just what's natural for me. It's what I like to do. It's what's fun. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, I'm like, yeah, I'll link you guys' video. Stoops is a really nice guy. Uh, you know, I've talked to him multiple times. He's helped me out on Lost Dark stuff whenever I first started playing the game. This is this is Savix's uh, comment on it. This is such a good video. Holy moly. Happy we became friends, man. PPC. Um love you brother and you'll do great in anything you do yeah i i think like just taking it less seriously bfa was a very it was bad for everybody's mental state it was bad for blizzard developers it was bad for players it was bad for stream content it was bad for everything and I think that the game got so bad that people finally were like, I'm just going to do what I want to do, and I'm not going to worry about any of this. And I think that's a good thing. That's a very, very positive thing.